what's gonna happen today? We're going to plant a plant and we're gonna go retrieve a wonderful, primitive, handmade, late Victorian piece of furniture that I paid $12 for at the Goodwill. Get ready. Have you heard people say, a lady never tells her age, but your furniture does? As soon as we toss this piece of furniture in the back of my truck and we get it home, we'll take a closer look at it and see if it tells its age. Now I'm parked outside of the Goodwill. I'm gonna shop first, and then we'll see the piece of furniture that I paid $12 for. $12. My goodness, that is a huge... Now, the glass is McKee Innovation. And uh, it's a huge lamp. Look how fancy the ba I don't think I've seen a lamp with a fancier base. There's a lot of talking going on in here. Um, this was probably done sometime in the 1940s. And there's a, there's a really bad eh right there. I mean, you really hardly see it. Somebody dinged it. I'm not going to buy this, um, but boy, it's beautiful. So, McKee made the glass. It's pressed in a mold, and then they do some cutting on a wheel. See, this is cut here, and uh, the tops are cut. Anyway, I thought I'd show it to you. The lamp is $42. A little bit out of focus. Yeah, it has a great look, but not for me, not today. Oh my goodness, look at this. This is really good. That is not as good as that, but these are both better than that. <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, not really. That's false graph. Okay, that's not old. It's it's nice. I'm not dissing you, false graph. This has no mark on it. Um, I actually did peel that sticker away and couldn't find anything. This is great. Look at the fish. Do you see that? Now, this has one tiny, tiny, tiny. I'm not worried about that. Who made it? That's a, a done in the factory. Uh, I have a feeling this is McCoy. Now, it is $2.99, and you better believe it's going into my cart. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I actually think this is a... I think it's McCoy. I think, I think... And it's probably not marked under there, although it might be. Um, I feel like I've got to move really fast because normally my nemesis is in here right now. And guess what? There's nobody here. Okay, that's going in the cart. This, you know, $3. This is probably, mid, you know, 1940s. Uh, it's got the springtime. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. But I still have to take a look. Yeah. Get out of town. <gasps> Another one. Wait a minute. Mm, okay, just a tiny, tiny cracked. No? Okay. Oh my gosh. It's McCoy. It is. Is there a price on it? <gasps> That's beautiful. I'm telling you what. I'm telling you what. I'm tearing it up. I'm tearing it up. Ooh, call the fire department. Because I'm on fire. Look at all of this. And you know, I've got points. I've saved up points. So I actually get, I think today I can get 15% off of all of this. Okay. We're going to take a look at everything either out in the car or back at the house. I am still, still shopping. Now on this side, I think I saw, I did. We know what that is. Yeah, so not that difficult to get your hands on that. So I think I'll just leave it there, especially since I'm doing, oh my word. That chair, classic 1940s. 
My mother has one in her house that was in her grandfather's house. And uh, I'll get it one of these days. <laughs> um, yeah, my great-grandfather's house. I knew him when I was very little. Uh, so I have some memories. But yeah, this is that's just so 1940s. Just a little side chair there. I know that looks like, it's very much looks like an office chair, but you could find chairs. That's a screaming baby. Okay, you could find chairs like that uh, in homes. And we've got old pictures at my great grandparents' house, me playing on the floor. And that house is frozen in the Great Depression, even though it was the early 70s when I knew him. That's in really good condition, and it's 20 bucks. 20 bucks. Now, if this isn't messed up, I'll take it. Remember how we look and we, if we see like a yellowish tint, we know we're way back, back at least, you know, the 30s, 40s, uh, Glass Bake, Pyrex, other companies. It's a nice big refrigerator dish. That's also an old style knob. So this, for Pete's sake, don't drop it. Oh yes, it's a Westinghouse. Okay, so you would get these when you would buy the refrigerator. $4. Uh, I'm gonna double check to make sure. That's a nice big one. I think I'm gonna go with that. I think so. Okay, you can see a hall vase. We're gonna look at that in a minute. Uh, a green mixing bowl. And I'm probably gonna go ahead and pop on all these little uh, individual glass bakes. I believe these, even though it says glass bake, uh, these can be jello molds and they can also be, you can also cook little round cakey things in them. Oh, okay, so there's another one. So we have six of them. Uh, I'm gonna, that's gonna be quite an investment to get all six of these. But I think I'm, I think, I think, I think, I've never seen those before. And I, I, I I've seen the large one, which is a jello mold believe it or not in glass so we'll see all right let's see let's see okay here i am at a thrift shop okay twenty dollars because they turn it upside down and they see fire king oven glass you know what you know what <clears throat> to be honest that's not even worth twenty dollars now on the internet on the uh well, I haven't priced these in a while. It's in good condition, but $20. All right. Somebody in the back room. And these were half price. They were $3 each. So instead of six, I paid $3 for the pair. And they're made out of plastic. What? What? What is he doing buying dumb plastic clip-on lampshades with all that beautiful stuff that he's got? Well... The ceiling in my basement is very low. I can bump my head on a plastic lampshade and live to tell the tale. I do not want to bump my head on anything else. So, hey, quick, easy. Okay, great. I'm just going to clip them onto a couple of the ceiling lights in the basement um, to hide the light bulbs and to uh, also, you know, it looks pretty. And they're just, they're cheap. They're plastic. Three dollars. Who's going to say no to that? Well, I didn't say no to it. All right, let's get him in the car. Of course, I'm always on the lookout for uh, quality and unusual pieces of clear glass. And I found this little piece here, which is probably circa 1900 or so. It's patterned glass, pressed glass, and it's got a nice little cut flower design on the front. I'm not sure what it was supposed to be used for, the late Victorians had a piece of glass for everything. Glass specifically for spoons called spooners. Uh, glass specifically to hold celery. Ah, this just might be some decorative thing. Not really sure. I don't think it's a spooner or a celery. But it's going in the cart. And you can see there's more in there. Now some of this stuff you've already seen. I think I got my video clips out of order. So if you've been watching me this week, you've already seen that wonderful, uh, wonderful piece of Mosser. Uh, I'm sorry, Mosier glass, not Mosser. There's some confusion over that. There, uh, 
One is spelled with one S and one with two S's. One an American company and the other one Czechoslovakian. We can talk about that some other time. Look at this uh, free gift from a delicatessen. I was running my mouth and didn't read the back of that plate. Cake plate. I like it. Some glass bacon front. A little 1920s piece. So the Mosier glass is the Czechoslovakian company. All handmade, high quality glass. And then that's spelled with one S. Mosser is an American company and they make all those uh, jadeite cake stands that you see. Among other things, it's a good company, but they're not related. Sometimes there's some confusion with that. There's a, a depression casserole in pink. Let's see. Is that an Edwin M. Knowles piece as well? Yeah. Probably from the mid to late 30s. Mm -hmm. Oh, before I forget, it actually started raining, and we're not going to get to see the piece of Victorian furniture. Don't worry, it's all covered up in my truck. It's in good shape. Uh, I just, I told you about that at the beginning of the video, but then, eh, Mother Nature said, uh-uh, not going to happen. So, we're going to leave it all wrapped up until next time. But we are going to plant a plant on the back porch, <laughs> back deck before it rains so i hope you'll stay tuned for that at the end of this video i like that eapg plate uh, i think that was another one of those hawking and there's a um, uh, etched is that let's look at it is it rose point by cambridge mm, it might be that's a pretty one. Elegant depression glass compote. I see. What else do I see? What do you see? Do you see what I see? <laughs> that was too easy. Mm, maybe a ferner. And uh, what am I reaching for? Another compote that looks like it's got cut, that it's uh, either cut. Yeah, I think it was cut. Okay, headed to my neighborhood hardware store. Uh, well, actually, eh, plants and hardware. What do you call it? Home outdoor store thing? Home and garden, that's what it is. A snake plant. That's right! No Boston fern for me. I love a Boston fern. Love a Boston fern, but they drop little drop it, droplets, right? I don't want to be picking up Boston fern pieces. Uh, and you got to mist it, and they get big. Okay. No Boston fern, and don't try to talk me into it. My mind is made up. Now the Boston fern is a little more Victorian. Anytime you see an old movie or look at old pictures from the 1930s, there's always some dumb old snake plant. <laughs> and I love a snake plant. There's always a snake plant, among others. Uh, the potted palm is very formal, very 1920s. 
I might have some palms out on the front porch as they can get pretty big. I want something vertical. I want nothing cluttering up that plant stand and so we're going to go with the verticality of the plant stand and the nice it's not fussy it's easy to take care of indirect light we don't need a lot of water I'm not worried about it we're going with a snake plant very probably like almost the most popular house plant in the 1930s every time you look at a movie now from the 30s you're gonna see a snake plant and go oh my gosh there's that doggone snake plant again all right and we need bird seed so let's go do that. No squirrel, just bird. I'll take care of that squirrel. Well, there's nothing quite like it from the African continent, the wonderful snake plant, as most of us call it. Some of you have another term, which I won't repeat because it's not very nice, mother-in-laws. Ah, uh, you know what it is. There it is. Yep. Beautiful. Love it. Now, I anticipate questions, and so I'll tell you, I've had that pot for 20 years and I have had snake plants in it. Uh, I'm not sure what happened to the last one. They're almost impossible to kill. Um, so it's wonderful. Now, you don't really have to put the rocks in the bottom because you hardly water a snake plant at all. Just a little bit of water every couple of weeks. Almost indestructible. You can even put this in a dark corner. It actually prefers low light. So wonderful. Um, also... The plant itself, I have never in my 40 years of planting plants in pots, have I ever had a pottery pot break because of roots. So just in case you're worried about that, I'm not worried about it. If the plant, if I ever decide the plant is too big, I'll thin it out. So it fits down there in there, it fits down in there beautifully. And I love a good old snake plant. And I hope you do too. That's what's going in the house. Low maintenance, can't kill it. <laughs> Low light, 
not much water. I'll be putting a glass plate underneath of the bottom of that with felt also underneath the glass plate to protect the plant stand. So there it is. Now I can't wait to get it inside and see what it looks like on that plant stand, but we'll have to do that another time. I'm going to let it sit out here and rest. I gave it a nice watering to get it started in there and it's, it should be just fine. Okay. Also I was on the back deck, which is up uh, at least eight feet off the ground. And I was sweeping my dirt right into the backyard. Isn't that wonderful? All right, I think it's time for lunch. All right, little snake plant, you're all set. I love it.